For Tender Pro Community Solutions, we are going to do structures.77. So let's find it. Uh, assuming you've installed the Portenta Pro Community Solutions, we're going down to coding curriculum. Uh, structures. So I made some changes there. I'm not keeping them. And I, I'm from a JavaScript background. Um, structures are kind of like uh, in JavaScript you have objects, uh, which are in pretty much JSON structure. Um, here, there, there are name variables inside a variable. Um, and so, uh, as always, let's just run the thing. Uh, we're on the right port. We're on the Cedrino Jow, which is in here. Everything's good. It's running. And then we'll talk about it if it actually works. If it doesn't work, what's the point of talking about it? Uh, load up the serial monitor. Clear out the old stuff. OK, counting. My test structs dot my count is three. Get used to these terms getting bigger. That's why we do camel case, which is as few capital letters as possible to make it readable. Um, I'm going to stop the auto scroll. So the count now got to 10. And the random my test structure, my struct float, is 6409.00. Um, Structures can have huge amounts of things in them. Notice they all start with my test structure, and then it's a dot to get to the variable you're interested in. I always put my beside mine, so this is a counting variable, my structure float. Okay, let's have a look at the code. Um, so here is the structure, defining the structure. Its keyword is struct. Uh, we're defining this one as struct capital. That's kind of interesting. Um, there's my int, my count. There's my float, my structure float. And this is now the name of that structure. Uh, there are other ways of setting that up. I kind of like this one. Um, that's kind of questionable because we now are calling it my test structure. OK, in the setup, we've got our serial monitor. We've got our random seed. Um, and in our main loop, we do here's the dot format for my count plus equals one. Here's the dot format for random from zero to 10,000. And then it's printing it. Um, not really much to this program. It's saying what it's printing, and then it's changing it into a string my test structure dot my count my test structure dot my struct float, which is exactly what it's telling you it's doing. And if we throw auto scroll on, it's still doing it. You can put timestamps in so it tells you which timestamp. I uh, notice this is 9600. I should have switched it to uh, the correct baud rate. But the Arduino IDE figures it out whether you've done that or not. Not always, but in this case it did. So that's counting. That's still random. Notice we don't have any decimal points going on here, but that's totally fine. We could actually make a decimal point here by adding another zero there and maybe dividing by 100. Uh, let's just run that again, see if it actually shows up some decimal points. Should, should not have changed the, the loop at all. And, but basically, that's a structure. Um, it's so you can sort of name variables inside a main variable. And that did not work. Why didn't it work? It's got our numbers. Uh, it is a float. That is a float. I'm actually, possibly because that random number isn't a float. Let's just see if that helps out. OK, caught me off guard. Uh, no idea why that doesn't work. Uh, random should return an integer. Oh, oh, totally know why. Uh, 0 0.0 is what's killing it. I bet this didn't actually fix anything. Let's go back and. Well, it did actually fix it, but let's see if the point zero was all I needed. I'm going to run it again. Uh, this is programming. You're learning all the time. Um, and 
in JavaScript, that would not have been an issue. Uh, here, Arduino C, C++, that is an issue. Let's just see if that fixed it. Yes, it did. Okay, so now we're getting uh, values that are um, in the decimals. And that's it. Have a good day.